Hello, listeners. Today is Wednesday, March 27th. Welcome to Behind the Numbers, Reimagining Retail, an eMarketer podcast. This is the show where we talk about how retail collides with every part of our lives. I'm your host, Sarah Lebo. Today's episode topic is our March unofficial most interesting retailers of the month list. That's right, we're doing it again. Before we jump into that, let's meet today's guests. Joining me for today's episode, we have Senior Director of Content on our media team, Becky Schilling. Hi, Becky. Hello, Sarah. Also with us, VP of Content on our retail desk, Susie David Canyon. Hey, Susie. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm so excited to be I'm on. I'm so excited to I have you. Off. Hi. Thanks for having me. And also with us is Senior Analyst, Zach Stambor. Hey, Zach. Hey, guys. All right. Let's get started with Free Sample. This is our Did You Know segment, where I share a fun fact, a tidbit, or a question. I am doing another multiple choice quiz. Today, my quiz for the three of you is, which of the following is not a real subscription box product name? I looked up a list of subscription boxes. Three of these are real. One of them is not. Is it A, Blue Land, B, Singles Swag, C, Face Tory, or D, Gum Guru. Which one of those isn't real? I'm going A. Me too. Oh, I'm going to go B. The single. So I feel like there's always yeah, a market for know. single. What would sad single people who are <laughs> ready to pay whatever it takes to find their partner Susie in life. Susie says there is a market for Sarah Lebo. What products are in that? Um. Okay. I, well, let me tell you what I would put in there. <laughs> Everyone is wrong. Oh. Okay. Blue Land, this is all according to a BuzzFeed list. Blue Land helps you say bye-bye to plastic with reusable bottles and nifty cleaning tablets that dissolve in water. Oh, yes, you, I know about this If you want those one. monthly, you can get them. Single Swag wants you to treat yourself with a collection of goodies geared towards self-care and self-love. Oh, how cute. Face Tory, that's one word, but it's like face and then the name Tory, is for K-beauty sheet masks that'll pamper and rejuvenate your skin. And Gum Guru, I made up. But it's my idea for like gum every month for like gum chewers. Maybe they could get a different gum each month. Yeah, I got it. It made sense to me. All right. Cool. So I tricked you guys this time (laughs) with my brilliant product idea. Let's keep going. Now it's time for our segment, the unofficial most interesting retailers of the month list. Becky, our colleague Ariel, and I, a.k.a. The Committee, have put together a very unofficial list of eight retailers we're watching right now based on which retailers are making the most interesting moves this month. What does interesting mean? Launching new initiatives, partnerships that move the needle, overperforming earnings, notable social media buzz, standout marketing campaigns, etc. This list is hyper subjective, but supported with objective analysis. Becky and I will present our list for the first half of this episode. And in the second half, Zach and Susie will have the opportunity to edit our list. So here is our list. Number eight, Michaels for launching a new online marketplace and in-store experiences. Becky, tell us more. Yeah, so we put Michaels in at number eight. In light of the Joanne bankruptcy news, Michaels is trying to position itself in a better place. Uh, They're doing that with uh, leaning into the store. -store In-store experiences, enhancements, doing birthday parties and classes. They're piloting, selling some of their third-party marketplace items in the stores as well. So they're building that local community, getting people to come in, and really trying to drive repeat and loyal engagement through their stores. At first, I thought this was so random. But after I had a little bit more about it, I do think that it's very clever. I already thought they were doing birthday parties, but it's very clever that they have add-ons, right? This is like a friction point for parents with younger kids. How do you organize a birthday party? So it's like all in. You can pick the pizza if you want it. You can do goodie bags. You don't have to spend extra ounces of energy on it. You could just get it done. 
Yeah, they also have this adorable ad for the Maker Place with this like little like handmade doll that I can't really describe, but it's so cute if you look it up. Well, and it all makes sense with the brand. That's the thing that I really like about what they're doing is whether it's the marketplace or the birthday parties or anything else, it just it makes sense for Michaels and helps put Michaels top of mind for consumers. Yeah, because they also have a bunch of other classes. I mean, it was kind of lengthy, the list of things. I just thought through COVID, they were already doing all these things. They must have revamped it a little bit. But the truth is they also don't have a lot of competition. You don't think about a Walmart or a Target when you're thinking about getting crafty things. So you yeah, sometimes also do. Helps. Do you? But yeah, I mean, they don't have Joann's anymore. I mean, I do, but. Yeah, there's Hobby Lobby. It's true. Number seven, Walmart for making its AI delivery optimization tool available to other companies and for announcing early morning delivery. Becky, why is Walmart interesting? And Walmart's always interesting, just Walmart plug. But Walmart is selling its software to other retailers, which is something that Walmart can do because of its scale, because of its size, because of its infrastructure, because of its investments. Walmart isn't just about offering retail products. They bring in so many other things into their stores that we've talked about before, healthcare, payments, and they expanding on their software that they built in-house makes perfect sense for them, especially to sell it to retailers who can't build those out on their own. They also have launched early morning delivery delivery kind of as a uh, poke back at Target. And they're piloting a use of 3D weavers for some of their private label clothing that was just announced. And that's kind of interesting as well. So that's why we put Walmart at number seven. Yeah, I think Walmart makes a lot of sense as a software as a service company. And none of these things are that heavy a lift for Walmart. But the impact of each of these initiatives could be significant. I mean, the Push into software makes a whole lot of sense. And I think I see a whole lot of runway there. And then smaller initiatives such as offering more convenience with more delivery options is just a very smart play and a way to leverage its stores in, in a smart way. And if you think about it, it's an extension of what they're already doing, right? Every retailer tried to figure out new revenue streams during COVID because their stores were closed for the most part, obviously not Walmart, but a lot of them. And so they started doing delivery as a service. And so now it's just a matter of time that everything that they figure out how to do scale that they then sell. And at the end of the day, it's probably to try and make sure that they win over every single retailer is on their side to beat Amazon. Number six, Aldi, which will open 800 new stores by the end of 2028. Becky, say more. Yeah, it's a $9 billion expansion coming off the heels of a pre prior multi billion dollar expansion. Aldi's waking huge waves in grocery. Placer.ai ranked them as the number four grocery chain that was visited in the US in 2023. And if anyone could come after Walmart for their grocery, it's Aldi, in my opinion. Aldi also has been doing a good job of kind of having a cult following, almost like a Trader Joe's. They just launched a bunch of new merch and it sold out right away. I actually do not agree at all, at all, at all, at all. And I just talked to a journalist <laughs> about this because everybody is thinking about like, how do we beat Walmart at grocery? And I don't think an Aldi will, no matter how many stores they build out, Walmart still has so many more stores. And we know Walmart is so good at that last mile delivery. And more importantly, when you go to a Walmart, you're buying groceries that you trust that are fresh, but you're also buying other random things. So it's like a one trip wonder kind of activity versus Aldi only has that groceries. All they have is groceries. The one thing I think is very cool is that they've turned grocery shopping into a fun activity with this aisle of shame. I don't know if you guys heard about this, where it's like random, random things that consumers are like a bit embarrassed that they buy, like Kraft macaroni and cheese. And it's in this space where you can go and it gets changed often enough that it makes you want to go and check it out. Okay. Number five, Lowe's, which is beta testing Google's new retail media product. Google jumping into retail media is a really big deal to me, at least. And Lowe's is taking a risk by working with Google kind of a risk. I mean, they already work with Google in another sense of advertising. So it's really not that huge a risk to work with Google. But I'm excited to see where the partnership leads. Our colleague Sky also mentioned that Lowe's was at South by Southwest experimenting with Apple's new Vision Pro goggles. So they're sort of getting a foot in every new channel. 
I agree that Lowe's is doing some interesting new things, especially if you think about they're trying to build out their retail media network. And so using Google and like going off site is going to, I think, help them because Google is trying to figure out how to get back in sort of the like top used sort of way of shopping and starting a customer journey. So this would help. Number four. Abercrombie & Fitch, which is getting into weddings. Abercrombie beat estimates in its Q4 2023 earnings, and now it's launching an affordable bridal shop, similar to what Anthropology is doing. I think this really shows that Abercrombie understands who its core customer is. Its core customer is getting older. Its core customer is getting married. It's not trying to stay young. It's done a really good job of adapting, really consistent with what we've seen from Abercrombie over the past couple of years. I think that's right. I think they just, they have their finger on the pulse of their customer base. They understand them well and they're serving them in many different ways so that they offer both athleisure as well as wedding stuff and everything in between. Yeah. Athleisure for the folks buying the single swag box. (laughs) Yeah. Number three, Wayfair, which is rebranding and opening a brick and mortar store. Becky, tell us more. Yeah, so we picked Wayfair for its rebrand and its new campaign, which is welcoming shoppers to the Waverhood, which is cute. They have a lot of celebrity partners. They have some new ones like Lisa Vanderpump of uh, Vanderpump Rules. If anyone is not on the Bravo universe. Are you in the Bravo universe? We can, you know, talk about that later. Um, Maybe. Shame. It's, 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 I didn't it's know my, that. It's my shame watching. Sometimes you just got to put something on and have it in the background. It's like the shame aisle. Like the it's shame aisle. Like the shame aisle. <laughs> What's one <laughs> person's shame is not someone else's. <laughs> They also did a Pinterest creator tour and they've, they're opening their first large format store in Illinois. So they're doing a lot of things to rebrand, to reposition themselves, to try to come out of a little bit of the slump that they've been in. Zach, the store is near you, right? It's like, it's very close to me. It's like a mile and a half, maybe two miles from my house. Congrats so on I being in the neighborhood. <laughs> right. I'm very much in the neighborhood. I have been watching it get built out. I'm very excited to see what it looks like, what shape it takes, and what the experience is like. I'm not sure it's going to work, but I think it's really interesting that they're pushing in this direction. I agree. I I pushed back on this being on our list originally. Um, Becky and Ariel reminded me that this is interesting things, not things we have faith in. And it's interesting. I was going to move this off the list, but now that you said that, I will pick a different retailer. I actually think it's too little too late. And the category that they're in... It's a difficult one. There's a lot of impulse purchases that are happening in the home decor space, which people are doing like at a TJ Maxx or Home Sense. They can't, so it's hard to compete on price. I think it's a touch feel kind of not a really online world. It has such a long, like cyclical life cycle for the products. I just think it's too little too late. I was going to take them off. So I agree with you, Sarah. Yeah, it is such a tough category to build an in-store experience when you very much are everything, which is what Wayfair offers. It offers every type of style of every type of thing. So deciding what to put in the Mm -hmm. store and how to showcase it will be, again, interesting to see how it actually takes shape. Number two, Target, which announced a paid membership to rival Walmart Plus and Amazon Prime. Target also just launched a private label toy brand, which adds to its big catalog of private label brands. And its retail media network, Roundell, just rolled out a new in-house ad buying program. So Target's at number two. I think the main reason is this paid membership. I mean, I thought you guys were also adding it because they're rolling out pilots around the cash wrap and making sure that there's a localization that's happening at the register at point of sale, whether it's self-checkout that's itemized or whether it's understanding who their consumer is and they want actually someone to help them. I thought that's why it made the list because they were moving from pilot to roll out. Great point, Susie. The paid membership program is interesting, though, because they are undercutting Walmart Plus, at least for Target credit card holders and Amazon Prime members. And so if it's only $49, that's a pretty inexpensive price tag to get free shipping. It's just a matter of does Target have the inventory that people need to get so quickly? But also, you could get a lot of stuff for free shipping if you hit a threshold. So what right. do they have? I feel like this game is so hard because I can't say more right now. You have to wait till <laughs> the second part. 
No, but it's true. It's because like the grocery business drives Walmart Plus, but Target's grocery business just doesn't have the same heft to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number one, Amazon, which announced a spring sale Prime Day type event. That's something that we predicted on this podcast last year. So pretty excited that that prediction came true. Amazon also has a new feature that uses AI to generate product listings from existing URLs. You just put a URL for a product in and it makes a listing on Amazon. And it's rumored to be considering a FedEx partnership for returns, but that's still rumored. I think the talk, they were in discussions last year, but the talks broke down and it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's why they call them rumors. Okay, so that is our top 10. To recap, we have number eight, Michaels. Number seven, Walmart. Number six, Aldi. Number five, Lowe's. Number four, Abercrombie and Fitch. Number three, Wayfair. Number two, Target. And number one, Amazon. We also have honorable mention nine and ten. Nine is Pinterest for data clean removes. And ten went to rent the runway for its new CMO and marketing approach. Now it's time for our second half, where Susie and Zach get to tell us where we went wrong. Each of them will have a chance to move a brand up or down on our rankings list and to add a new company entirely. So, Susie, make a move. So, I would move Target down a couple because of the, like, really, they've tried every single membership program that they can. Right now, it's tied to their red card, which I think is working for them. And to do a random pay $50 a year, we know people don't have multiple retail memberships, but let's throw one more in. And by the way, you don't get anything really new or different, and there's no additive to it than if you had your red card. You even get cash back with your red card. So I just think it's really not going well for them right now. Although I do love Target and I do want to do a plug. Their Target Canada didn't quite work out, but they have figured out a different different way to get some loved private label brands into Canada. And so they're partnering. So I think they're doing some very cool things. I just don't think that membership is the right move. And they probably, I'm hypothesizing, as all of us are, that they'll probably launch other additive things. But right now, you can't have a membership service based on delivery. I think we need the added context there that Susie is Canadian, in case you're not an always listener, hence the Canada plug. Becky, do you accept Susie's move to move Target down? How far down are you proposing, Susie? I mean, I would move out Abercrombie and Fitch because I actually think they're only doing well because everything is more expensive and their consumer that is slightly younger, even though they're getting older and doing bridal, but everybody has bridal in that sort of sphere of brands like J. Crew has it. Everybody has it already. So they're a little bit late to the party. And at some point, the people that they're trying to target with more expensive jeans because just inflation and cost of goods, they're going to stop spending. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen to Abercrombie. So I would move them off completely. And I think I would just move Target to four, four, maybe. I don't know. I kind of would move Wayfair off too. So I don't know. I didn't play by the rules. You broke every rule in the book. What's right new? Ask Marcus. <laughs> let's, let's, so Becky, are you accepting moving Target down uh, and maybe replacing Abercrombie and Fitch? I would oh, replace it with the one I'm going to add. Okay. Yeah. Will you move Target down to four, Becky? Yeah. I will accept that move. I'll Aww. accept it too. Thanks, guys. I've Target's so good. interesting. I don't think a ton of brands did like crazy things this month, hence Target being so high, but I'm fine with moving it down. Zach, make a move. I'm moving Aldi all the way up to the third slot. This is a huge move that they're making. It will increase their store count by 30%, roughly, I think. Yeah, because they don't have a lot. Yeah, but groceries is all about convenience. And so you need a big store count if you want to boost sales. And that's what they're doing. They're moving into new areas, which will enable them to attract more customers. And they're doing it at a time when everyone is thinking about how much groceries cost. And so I think this is really interesting. Becky. I accept that move wholeheartedly. I had Aldi number two on my list. Yeah. Do I accept that move? Sure. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> See, also, Susie, well, one other thing about all these is <laughs> to what Susie was saying earlier, I don't think that although Walmart and Aldi are both going after similar types of customers, I think the actual people who shop at each have different mindsets. 
Aldi, it's a very streamlined, simple to navigate experience. Whereas Walmart, you have like 50 different pasta sauces. Aldi is not easy to navigate if you don't have a quarter. Because you need a quarter to get the shopping cart UK style. And if you don't have a quarter, you just can't shop at Aldi. But otherwise, it's easy to navigate. It is an interesting store format. And like Becky said, it's a multi-billion dollar expansion. So yeah, I'll accept this move. Sorry, Susie. No, that's okay. I hope they'll be successful. I feel like we do need competition. It's why the Albertson Kroger move isn't getting, you know, approved necessarily. At least there's contention. It's contentious right now. There, the more competition there is in groceries, it's basics, right? The mm-hmm. better value consumers will have. Okay. So we've accepted those moves. We have moved Target down to number four and we've moved Aldi up from number six to number three. Okay. Now let's do some wild cards. Yeah! Zach, what is your wild card? Kohl's. Um, <gasps> Kohl's is interesting. That is my caveat. This is interesting retailers. It is not like this is a surefire hit. But Kohl's is enlarging its home assortment by 40%, which is interesting. You know, Kohl's very much is in a push to reposition, remake its inventory mix to really more sharply define like who it is, who it serves. And this is its first big push in that direction. So again, I'm not really sure this will work. It's a tough category where a lot of sales were pulled forward earlier in the pandemic. I mean, we were just stuck at home and people were sick of what their houses looked like and they bought a lot of home stuff. But it's interesting. It's interesting. I don't accept this move. Ariel had Kohl's on on her list when we were coming up with this list. So you're definitely like in uh, agreement with one third of the committee, but that third isn't here to speak up. So <laughs> I will. Kohl's is leaning really heavily into shop and shops, but that's always kind of been its thing. Ariel is bullish on shop and shops. We see like Claire's and Walgreens right now and just a lot of that. But Kohl's has always been doing that. And in order for that to be successful, you need people coming into Kohl's and it's just... Kohl's is inherently not the most interesting brand to me. So I feel like the Sephora has really helped them, right? The Kohl, the Sephora and a Kohl's has really brought them a new customer. And for home goods, it doesn't sound like they're I, – I didn't know about this, but it doesn't sound like they're doing a shop and shop. It sounds like they're adding assortment. A lot of their assortment in home is private label, which is value, and then they can jump on trends much more quickly. And a lot of people don't know if you have Ralph Lauren deck pillows or, I mean, unless you got them with a little logo, but you know what I mean? Like it's not a super branded home decor is not that branded. So they do have a shot, especially if they cater to a younger Sephora style customer. Yeah, Yeah, I think that's right. And it is not a shop and shop. This is just cold. Okay. But the biggest hurdle is just going to be building awareness. And and like, can they build awareness that they are a destination for home stuff? I don't know. And I'm not convinced. So I'm not accepting this move. What about you, Becky? Who would you take off? I think I'll take off Abercrombie because nothing this month in particular is that overwhelmingly interesting. I would accept that move. I I would accept Kohl's for Abercrombie and Fitch. Okay, because we know Ariel was pro Kohl's, I think that we should record that one as accepted. Okay. All right, Susie, who is your wild card? So obviously, nobody is going to be surprised about who I pick, but I have really strong reasons why I picked Macy's to Mm -hmm. put into the top 10 because Macy's has a new CEO that just started and he is going back to basics. So he, Macy's Inc., I should say, not Macy's, the department store, but just the conglomerate of brands. He's coming from the smaller luxury space of Bloomingdale's and he is going to infuse some of that back to basics customer service into the store. They just announced how they're going to start fueling more salespeople into the store. At the same time, they're doing cost cutting. So they're investing and they're cost cutting, which will help their bottom line. They're closing a fulfillment center. They're closing a ton of stores. We all heard about that earlier this month. And more importantly, so this is back to they're doing something interesting when it comes to the investor world. 
It is the first time in a very long time that I have heard Macy's is now actually open to going private. Part of that is it's so expensive to move the needle on these large legacy brands. And the street is waiting to see immediate results. We saw that with JCPenney, right? And so the easiest way to try and put your end, even with Bed Bath & Beyond, right? We see a time and time again where someone comes in, tries to make changes, They're trying to do it, but everybody wants it to happen much faster. So going private will give them a little bit of leeway to make some big changes before they go back and are public again, assuming that happens. The other cool thing is that they are not alone in the department store space. Nordstrom is also entertaining the idea of going private again. And so I just think this is a new way of thinking. It's something that they have been opposed for a long time. The only sadness for me is that part of the duo that's looking at them is very real estate forward. Mm. And so the sad thing will be if they do go private and then they start to get sold for pieces. Becky, are you accepting this move? I love you, Susie, but I'm not accepting this move. I don't think it's as interesting as what the other retailers on this list are doing. I'm with Becky. I think going private is interesting. I think that Macy's, for the same reason that I don't find Kohl's inherently interesting, these retailers need people going to them. And in the case of Macy's, it needs people going to malls. I know it's not exclusively in malls anymore. And I know people are going to malls some, but I still just like don't think it's interesting. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But it is Macy's Inc. So that does include Bloomingdale's and, and the Fair outlet point. stores and Blue Mercury. But still, I mean, the, the big news right now is the right sizing cost and spending. Okay, so our latest list with those moves is number eight, Michaels, which is new on the list. Number seven, Walmart, which dropped from number one in February. Number six, Lowe's, that's new. Number five, Kohl's, also new. Number three, Target, which dropped just one spot from February. Number three, Wayfair, that's new. Number two, Aldi, also new on the list. And number one, Amazon, which is up from number two in February. So there is our final list. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Susie. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is really fun. And thanks, Becky. It was a blast. Thanks, gang. Please give us a rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you to our listeners and to Victoria, who edits the podcast and is number one on my list. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of Reimagining Retail, an eMarketer podcast. And tomorrow, join Marcus for another episode of the Behind the Numbers Daily.